I got to rest, a rest, a rest, and then I just have to figure it out down there. Okay, down the first one. So what is affordable? It turns out it's like $3,000. And if you go back to our field test last year, you can see that bikes are pretty darn good for 3,000 bucks, but they still haven't come up to where we would like them. And that is pro bike handling, pro bike geometry, up to the minute stuff. And today I'm happy to say that we have two bicycles that have actually made that bar. One of them is from Ibis and they sell through dealers and it's the new Ripmo aluminum frame. It's the Ripmo AF. And the other one comes from Canyon, which is a dealer direct uh, sales model. But right now I gotta tell you that you're gonna be excited. So we're looking at the Canyon Spectral AL 6.0. Cost $28.99. This is a 27.5 inch wheel bike. And uh, as you can see, it's got an aluminum frame. And the welds are pretty good. This isn't the best I've seen, but the numbers are great. It's got a 66 degree head angle, which is a little bit on the steep side, but slack enough, and it's proven out here to really get down and do the business. The seat angle is not that steep. It's 74.5, which you'd want it to be around 76, 77 if you want to be Vanguard. But this is about as slack as it can be and still be an acceptable modern trail bike. These chain stays are 430 millimeters. That's good for a 27 five inch bike. And the reach is uh, 440 millimeters, which is pretty darn good. It's it's not long for me for medium-sized frame it's right in the it's right in the middle of that range that you want the top tube is a little under 24 inches at uh, 605 millimeters which is generous so it's got good reach good top tube this is a bike that is going to cover a wide range of people for the medium size and this is a great handling bike very German kind of stiff in the suspension but definitely capable of backcountry trails. Now let's see how it does on some slippery routes. Oh yeah. Easy schmeasy. So let's check out the components. Let's start with a SRAM Eagle and this is the GX Eagle 12 speed. It's the derailleur crank set, descendant crank set, 32 tooth this is pretty much all you need. Now Canyon is a mail order direct, so they can afford to sell bikes about 20% better spec than some of these going through a dealer. Fox 36 rhythm fork, I mean, really? <laughs> Can't get much better than that. You can put better in internals, but you can upgrade that later. DPX2 piggyback shock, that was non-existent at this level bike just three years ago. Pretty much a miracle that we see it on this bike. The front and rear is a little stiff on the suspension, but honestly, they're balanced. And as long as it's balanced, your mind compensates and everything becomes intuitive. And that's really what makes a mountain bike great. And one thing I like about this bike is it's simple. Check out this rear suspension. This is a bit, it's a horse link design. It's a little unusual, but a horse link design is just a simple four bar. This is the upper link and it's got 150 millimeters of travel, but you can see there's very little to go wrong on this. And the meaty parts, this main pit, uh, swing arm pivot is completely sealed off. It's a little ugly. It's a plate with screws on it, but that is the seal, my friend. <laughs> Now to afford all those good things, we go to house brand components and you expect this here. So it's not really a downgrade as long as you get everything right. So let's look at them. We've got uh, 780 width aluminum bars. We've got this little bit too large stem for my taste, but 50 millimeters, that's exactly what you need. And over here we have a name, uh, a no name, but still very good dropper seat post, 150 millimeters. So climbing on the spectral, is actually not bad at all. 
it's plenty of anti-squat really gets the rear tire digging into the ground on these steeps i'd say this is about eight out of ten maybe a little better for good climbing bikes you don't get too scared of these stupid grinds so let's look at the brakes these are my favorite guides they're a little bit foggy when it comes to the bite point guides aren't exactly what i would buy for a bike but if they had them i wouldn't throw them away i'd run them for life so the wheels and the tires here are a surprise uh, dt swiss 1900s m1900s and they're aluminum eyelets and these are actually uh, 30 millimeter inner width rims which is exactly what you'd want on a trail bike that you're going to take out to whistler and pound on the on the double blacks and you don't have to buy new tires so it's got minion dhr front and rear exo casing so basically this is the pro spec knock down a couple of notches but it's a need nothing build. Get all the features you need, all the performance you need at about two thirds of the price. And that's where Dealer Direct comes in. But this one's got a great parts deal. Frame, the frame really is uninspiring. Gangan's compromise was to not spend so much money on the frame. Now, I'm not saying this frame is a bad one. They just didn't do the unbelievable finish and the last little details that cost a lot of money. So if we look at this thing, you can see that the welds are a little rough, down here especially. And over here you can see a couple little things where they hammered this into shape, this gusset. If you want to look for fancy, then maybe let's take a look at the Ibis, because the Ibis, you'll see later, really has a, a wonderful frame. Now, if you're familiar with the Ripmo, it's the first time that Ibis decided to dive into modern geometry, long, low, and slack, and they did a damn good job of it. They made it out of carbon, and it's a pretty expensive bike. The Ripmo AF that we're looking right at right here cost the same complete as it stands as a frame and shock if you bought the carbon Ripmo today. So this Ripmo AF, the aluminum version, has all the features of the original Ripmo. And we're talking about DW Link, super good pedaling DW Link rear suspension. It's got 29 inch wheels. It's got 160 millimeter fork and 147 millimeters in uh, rear wheel travel. And that's pretty much all you need for a trail bike with big wheels. And it pr it's proven out pretty well. But there's extras on this bike that only the aluminum version gets. And that's a slightly different kinematic. This new shock kinematic gives you a bit more of a rising rate towards the end stroke, which makes it a little bit more capable on those big hits that you're going to be getting. And they added a little bit to the reach and a little bit to the top two. And the reason for that is they know that this bike's going to cover a wide spectrum of riders from people that are just absolute hammers to men and women that just want to go out and have a super capable trail bike so they added the capability in case you are that hammer person so you don't have to search elsewhere now one of the things that we've always been fighting for on this mid-price uh three thousand dollar level bike is great suspension. So we get the DVO Topaz Reservoir Shock with an extreme level of adjustability. You can add or subtract, obviously, your spring pressure, super sensitive rebound, low speed compression. It's got pretty much everything you want in a shock and it absolutely performs well on the trail. And up front, we match it with a diamond fork, 160 millimeters of travel. Uh, it's got adjustable negative spring, uh, high speed and low speed compression, 44 millimeters of offset, which is great for trail riding with big wheels. It's really, the, it's the real deal. Super sensitive, absolutely adjustable. It's, it's a pro fork on a bicycle that we just never believed that this stuff would show on. Last year we had like two bikes that were capable. And this is the first year where everybody was calling up and saying, hey, RC, I got this $3,000 bike. And it's got the right geo and kicked out hit angle and and, uh, and now we have two of them it's kind of like the end of a long journey rc's a damn fine mountain biker but this is also a pretty rugged line okay down the first one got it F yeah F yeah i made it <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you made it too. I didn't want to carry you out. <laughs> so you got to make the saving somewhere. And as you can see, 
this is a pretty high quality frame. So in the components, we step down to NX. And this is SRAM's 12 speed, but it's not the 500% range that we get in, in the in the eagles this is a, an 11 tooth sprocket gives us a little bit tiny bit less of a spread but we still have 12 speed we still have the 50 tooth and that's really what you want i mean your high speed runs are going to be coasting anyway if you're a gravity addict and this bike likes to coast fast so that's one of the compromises nx isn't the greatest component group but it's also the lowest you can go in this in the SRAM Eagle 12 speed range where you actually have the reliability and the smooth shifting that you need as a high level rider. We're just like exactly like the Ripmo only it's aluminum and it's got everything that its big daddy has only better. Because the original Ripmo, big secret here, jump there, in the corner, had a little bit of a falling rate at the end of the stroke, and they fixed it with this bike. So it's got that super good pedaling platform, big 29 inch wheels, and when you bottom it out, it feels like velvet. Top tube clearance, they want to get the most people on a, on a medium size or any size bike. So they have a really low top tube clearance and that allows you to use a very long dropper post. This is a 150 KS. KS is a pretty much the top of the line for the affordable droppers. Working pretty good these days. But you can see there's plenty of room here to put a 170 in if you have the, the ride height and you need one. So one of the things that Dave Weagle, the guideline DW link, has figured out and the gift he's given to the trail rider is how to get that nexus between suspension that reacts to the bumps but doesn't react to the bad body movements when you're climbing. It's just about the time when the going gets steep, like this little crusher here, everything burns up and it becomes possible to just grind your way up the top without suffering too much. And this bike is a pretty darn good climber. This pitch doesn't look as hard as it is. It's a good one. There. Easy schmeasy. And Ibis gives us yet another surprise here in the wheels. The new Maxxis Asagai tire, designed by Greg Minar, is one of the stickiest, best cornering tires period you can buy. So here we have their 35 millimeter rim, which only was available in carbon, now reproduced in aluminum. So you can have the same performance, little bit extra weight, everything that the other wheel had, including offset spokes, so that you get even spoke tension with both disc brakes in the front and the cassette in the rear, all in an affordable, durable aluminum rim. It's one of the biggest happinesses of my journalistic life to see a company like Ibis put so much table up, up, everything they have into an affordable bike because a lot of people have skills but just no money. Ibis cheated a little bit here. This is their high-end carbon bar. It's one of my favorite bends because you get a little bit of elevation here without a lot of pullback. You don't waste the, your stem and get too far behind it. So it's one of my favorite risers, but this is the carbon version. And I'm sorry to say that you're gonna get an aluminum bar if you buy the Ibis Ripmo AF, but that's okay. 780 millimeters, cut it to length. Ibis grips are absolutely comfortable and you can see they have a really small uh, clamp on collar i like that these brakes are a slight disappointment they're the lower level guide they still four piston calipers they really do a good job in a stopping department but they've been a little vague on this on this field test not too vague to throw them away like i said i wouldn't buy new brakes i'd put up with them but i like a little crisper feel at the bike point My pick for the absolutely capable do-anything modern trail bike for $3,000 has to be the Ibis Ritmo. It's just a gorgeous bike to look at. Its performance is pretty flawless when it comes to that super supple rear suspension. The DW Link 
pedals extremely well no matter whether you got the climb switch on or off it's got 29 inch wheels which I've become a fan of just the right width aluminum rims Asagai tires which just turned out to be exactly what you, you need out here at Whistler and then we've got the DVO suspension now that is a step up from anything I've ever seen in this price point. When you're out just playing around trail riding, it climbs beautifully. And so this would be my pick for the overall winner. So close on the heels is the Spectral 6.0. This bike has a little firmer suspension. Uh, not exactly what I like, but a lot of people do like the suspension stiff. And in that case, this is the classic. I dinged this one because with a 66 degree head angle, it's a little steeper than we're going. I mean, we're dropping down below 65 now. So I would expect Canyon with a debut bike like this to be a little slacker in the front, but it doesn't hurt. This thing has done really good on the technical side. What I really wanted to do was push a little bit, add some pressure to this to see if I could get an affordable bike at the highest level of performance for the riders that actually know what they're doing. And that was a big hole in the industry. So this is one of the happiest moments of my life. And I'd like to congratulate Ibis for giving us the Ripmo AF. And I'd like to congratulate Canyon for putting the, their, their work in and getting the Spectral AL 6.0 to this high level. This is a great moment for every rider. But right now I'm having so much fun. I'm tired of talking about the bike. So I'll see you later. I'm just gonna enjoy the ride.